Okay, Swimming Pool Steve here with another quick review of a uh, swimming pool equipment installation. This is a very simple setup for a smaller on-ground pool, but let's see what we see. So first of all, we've got uh, SpaFlex. That's what the pool was uh, was plumbed in. SpaFlex, TigerFlex, flexible PVC. We've got an inch and a half uh, coupling into an inch and a half street elbow. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I don't like the street elbows. The street elbows are a major flow restriction, and there's no reason for this. They make a better product, which is a sweep elbow. Um, the street elbow is like the water hitting a brick wall and then having to turn and move in a different direction completely. And uh, it, it's very much a disruption to flow and an additional, um, an additional load for your pump to bear uh, every minute of operation for the rest of its life. And the long-term effects of that are is it's likely to... Uh, it incrementally reduce the longevity of your pump. You know, the more problems like that you have, the harder your pump's going to be working. Um, so yeah, I don't like to see that. Guys use that because, you know, there's a slip connection here, inch and a half slip connection on this um, valve. So instead of putting in a, a piece of PVC uh, called a, a connector piece or close connector, uh, which basically is the length of the slip times two, and then putting a, uh, a traditional 90 or a sweep 90 on here going down, it's, it's an, a couple of extra cuts and that's why guys use these because it's faster, right? Just glue that spigot right into the, the inch and a half slip port and you're good to go. But in my opinion, take the extra time and, uh, you know, the, the service technician, he's not, you know, the, he probably is thinking about longe longevity, but not really. You know, like he, kn he knows that this isn't going to cause a problem for the pump. If you got one year less life out of this pump as a result, you know, that's not really any of his concern, you know, and that's why you see stuff like this. It's just easier for them. But, you know, would I do this on my own pool, my personal pool? No, no way. Wouldn't do it. So that's kind of the way I like to approach this. So moving on, we've got a single union ball valve and about an eight inch straight run into the pump, which is nice. I'd like to see that, uh, you know, that's about the bare minimum that I want to see for a straight run into the pump because that, uh, you know, the pump has to work harder. Now you can see this pump here. This is a tri-star, probably half horsepower. Uh, it's not running with a full chamber. There's a lot of uh, a lot of air in there. That's a big wet end, and with some flow restrictions like that, you know, it could be that that's causing it. Could be that the filter needs to be backwashed. We'll check the pressure in a second. Um, but yeah, that's something that you would typically see from a pump that's maybe not sized correctly, or maybe is experiencing some uh, some flow problems. The pump motor itself sounds fantastic, super quiet, no problem there. Um, so I don't think that that's the, the, the problem. I think it's probably a fairly new pump um, and that's probably as good as it'll ever be able to run on this system. Okay, so coming out of the pump into the filter. Again, <clears throat> here we see this, the flexible PVC that's been clamped into place. This is for primer and glue connections like you see here on this coupling, not for clamping. Uh, does it work? Well, yeah, I guess so. The water's not currently squirting out of here, but it doesn't make it correct. Um, at least their clamp orientation is correct. One clamp facing each direction, opposite to each other like that, because each of these clamps has a tight spot, uh, and then a subsequent spot that's not quite as tight. So by doing this, you, uh, you get the best of both worlds tight on both sides. But this is something that you should do for, for poly and barbed fittings, not for spa flex. I'd prefer to see this replaced with a PVC male, threaded male adapter, and then glue this pipe into that. That's what I'd like to see. System's running at 15 PSI. Probably a little bit high. I bet you this guy's due for a backwash here. Probably dropped by a couple of PSI if I were to do a backwash. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so back out of the filter. I'm going into a Nature 2 colloidal silver. Um, injection system, colloidal silver, is a bactericide. It's a nat it naturally kills bacteria and reduces your chlorine demand. These systems require a new mineral pack once a year, uh, and that's what they do. They dump a whole bunch of silver into your water, and then the silver kills bacteria, but also absorbs into your skin every time that you're in the water. Uh, I personally don't use these, even though they do technically work, because in my opinion, the jury is still out on the potential harmful long-term effects of the exposure to silver, uh, being that the body doesn't really dissipate the metals it absorbs, it just continues to uh, add up in your body over time. So it's not something that I'm completely sold on yet. I can also see that there's a little bit of dampness down there, probably leaking from that winterization part on the bottom. So then we go inch and a half male adapter, a little piece of 
uh, rigid PVC into an inline chlorinator. Uh, inline chlorinators are are good. Uh, my only problem with the inline chlorinator is that it's a pretty serious flow restriction. Uh, for that reason, I prefer the offline chlorinator that has the 3 8 um, differential pressure. So you'd go up one, one side of the filter and then the other side of the filter uh, with each of the two lines and it will draw a small amount of water through the chlorinator as opposed to this one which is inch and a half in diameter and plumbed in line with the system forcing the entire flow of the system to push through here. That's probably also contributing to this pump not running with a full chamber of water. So then out from there, we go into another single union ball valve, which I like. I like to see valves everywhere. That makes winterization super easy. Uh, looks like the original guy, for whatever reason, plumbed that, that 90 in. That last 90 you see is a slip port one connection and a threaded port on the other. Uh, no reason to use threaded. It was probably the last thing he had in his truck. So it required the use of a couple of extra fittings in order to transition back into uh, the slip connections for the PVC. So, even though it's a simple system, there's a lot to talk about here. You can imagine uh, how much you can find with a really complicated mechanical room. But this one's, uh, this one's passably good, and it's a pretty, uh, pretty entry-level system overall.